Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Human Colony Saturday webinar. Today is February 25th, 2017. And this morning we have Jim Charles, who has joined us again to channel. Good morning, Jim. Good morning. Hi, it's so good to have you back with us. Thank you so much for joining again. And so I wanted to quickly go through um, some general announcements. Just wanted to make sure that people have um, our links and everything. Give me one second here. I'm having some feedback and I can hear myself talking and it's driving me crazy. Okay, there we go. Got it fixed. So. Um, Please go to humancolony.org if you would like to um, stay up to date on our announcements and our events that we have going on. We have a calendar on there. You can always go to humancolony.org slash jump to check out our participation links for any of our events and uh, stay tuned to what we have going on. Um, we are doing a book transcription project where we're transcribing videos to be used. Um, I mean, to be put into English or other languages so that we can have it in a written book format. So if you have any insight, if you have any suggestions for videos that you really would like to see transcribed, or if you would like to transcribe or translate, please reach out to max at humancolony.org. And uh, we will get you involved in this co-creative book project. Um, it is much appreciated so we can get this stuff written down. Um, also, as far as upcoming events, Jim, I don't know. I think we're still um, figuring out next week. Is that right? Are you? Do you know anything about? Yes, yeah, so I'm not going to be here next week because there's too many things to do. However, he is uh, Max is uh, also uh, starting to get in touch with Alina Kapulnik and some of the others to do some more of the interviews that we were doing before. Also, I wanted to announce that there is a new Ucolo channel, and it is like a bulletin board, ucolo.org, and there's no really interaction there, but it's more of a bulletin board or a message board and gives you information about uh, what's coming up and uh, posts from uh, different people, I guess, that uh, Max has taken their information. Oh, okay, great. Yeah, so um, can get more information about that. Just feel free to reach out to Max and email him. Um, and awesome. Yeah, so we have some cool stuff in the works. We like getting other channelers on here and sharing their information as well because um, everybody has their own style. Everybody has their own insight and pulls through different things. So um, we had already gone through some blessings, uh, excuse me, we had already gone through some requests before we started here. So, um, I think, I mean, we had a lot of requests roll in, so we should be set with requests. Um, we're going to start with three quick blessings and then I think we should get started. Is there anything else you wanted to cover, Jim? Um, no, just, um, be very positive, think very warm thoughts and use your unconditional love because... That's when things work out the best. Yes, absolutely. We appreciate the energy that everybody is contributing for us to make this happen. So I want to thank you all for being here. Thank you very much. Yes, yes. Thank you. This is um, such a, a blessing and an honor that we get to do this stuff and that it's completely volunteer based and it's awesome. So thank you everybody for joining. Um, let's get started with some blessings. I think Angie. Oh. Let me quickly read everybody in the room, and then, Jim, you can go through who's in the room. Then we'll do blessings. I'm sorry. We have uh, this morning with us Chris, Ade, uh, Astrid, Amran, Brian, Carolina, Christine, Christy, David Allen, Gabriel, Ina, uh, Jim, Krelik, Michelle, Nabila, Pete, Maria, Cheer, Stephanie, Will, and myself, Bree. And who's in the room with you, Jim? I have Angela, Barbara, Caroline, Carol, Caroline. I'm sorry, I almost said Carolina because I was looking at Carolina, <laughs> and John, uh, David, and Ray Mund, Ray Mund. Ray's good. <laughs> so, awesome. Got a nice awesome. little crowd here. Right. Beautiful energy. Yes. Awesome. Well, looking forward to it. Um, Angie, if you're ready, please go right ahead. Let's raise up these vibrations. 
<laughs> okay. She's right here. Can you see her? Hey, there she is. Adua nania wata tia, asati ayat ata uana ya, iya nania wa ati tia, asatati ana nia ya wawane, wane si si ata tua teti, iya kato tua satana, iya nia wawa, ita nantu asati tia. The face of human history is changing. Some may say for the better, but I say for the best because most people are moving forward. Most people are embracing the energies that are coming to them. Let your negativity diminish and let your flame not be cor corrupted. Let it never go out and let it always burn brightly. For this is the world that you want to create for your future and your present. That was beautiful. Thank you so much, Angie and Jim. Um, I believe that Gabe said that he would like to do an Arcturian blessing. I don't hear you. You are very quiet. Yeah, I don't hear anything, Gabe. Is your microphone working? Next and see if you can come back. Okay. All right. Uh, Will, please go ahead. Our faces may not appeal to you, and our physiology might be frightening. However, our heart beats the same way as yours does, and our unconditional love can be felt the same way as yours towards us. We thank you for acceptance. We thank you for love. And we hope that the rest of your species will continue to move forward. We know that some of them are stifled or feel like they are static but there is nothing static in the universe all things are in motion and we know that most of your population is moving forward thank you for your efforts on trying to help those around you great light to them and not a stumbling block I like that. Thank you, Will. The Whisperers. Awesome. Beautiful. Okay. Gabriel is back. How's your microphone, Gabriel? You can hear me now, right? Yes, I can hear you. Awesome. Go. Help is everywhere in the universe if you know where to look. And that those things of negativity will not even come to your thought process because they are not relevant to your movement. Stay strong and stay listening to the thoughts that come from the great positivity of your heart. And do not let your life be overshadowed by dark 
darkness comes to this, then find the light that is your soul and heart and God of your creation. Thank you so much. Always such a high vibe with that Arturian. It's <laughs> awesome. All right. Beautiful. Well, with that, I think we are all set. Let's see who comes through with messages for the highest greatest good. Thank you. Thank Jim. you. Everybody say some really good pr prayers and we'll see who comes through. Oh, hello, my children. It is Mother Gaia. <laughs> hello, Mother Gaia. And how are you all today? <laughs> oh, much better now that you popped in. How are you doing, dear? Well, there's, there's things that I must tell you, so that is why I'm here. Please. You all know that the fourth dimensional energy cloud has passed or is gone. Let's put it that way. <laughs> But the energies of the earth are still very active and they are still affecting how humans feel. But by the end of next month, they should have settled down or should be settled down into a place where you may feel more normal. Now, let me say this with that. <laughs> that I will also be sending some uh, greater normality. You see, there's been a lot of earthquakes. There's been a lot of storms and very interesting weather on the surface of the planet because of these different energies and the energies of the universe that have been coming through so very strongly. So therefore, you must expect that these things will happen at this time. But... The, the earth will not calm down until the earth energies have reestablished themselves in a way that is proper. <laughs> is there any questions out there for me? Because I may not just, I was just giving a very general overview and some of you might have something more specific to ask. <laughs> Well, oh, please. I have a question within the room here. Perfect. Hold on. Guy, I'm curious to know how the animals and the plants and everybody, like nature, is doing during this time. Oh, very good question. I don't know if you've realized. She asked how the animals and nature are doing at this time. Has anyone noticed the change in the ways that the birds are reacting? There are more birds in this area right here that I'm in right now <laughs> than there should be at this time of year. There are also birds flying south now. Why do you think that is? The earth energies have confused the uh, electromagnetic fields in some ways. Also, are starting to, um, the, some of them are coming up early, and the ones that should be coming up the earliest are not interesting. It's the intermediate flowers that are coming up. Why do you think this is? It is because the earth energy is are supporting them, that's why. And they are not supporting the earlier of the plant life. So, you will see that the birds and animals are out of alignment because of the electromagnetic fields and because of the jet streams and earth cycles. <laughs> but if you pay attention, you will notice that the birds are the ones that are the most influenced because A, <laughs> they're the ones bringing human messages to people. Ones that speak to humans in times like this. And so some of them have 
are, that are very aware is have stayed around just to bring messages to certain people. Others are moving back and forth between their migration states, but they are not in a normal uh, migration state. Has anyone out there noticed this? Yes. And so, yes, just recently, all the birds that should be coming back in a month and a half are already here. And some of the birds that should have left many months ago are just now leaving. <laughs> It is a silliness, but they will figure it out after the Earth energies have uh, settled down. However, those birds that are migrating now are going to be very tired when they have to come right back home. So, therefore, I will give them a little extra energy. <laughs> are there any questions out there? Oh, that's very interesting. Um, I'm curious uh, if you could give other examples of uh, other types of animals or um, beings on this planet that are a little mixed up right now with the, this huge shift in energy we've gone through recently. Oh, yes. There, are, there have been bear sightings, and they should still be in hibernation in most places. And if you have a bear sighting at this time of year, this is still considered, considered the hibernation season. And so they should not be awake yet. <laughs> also, there are those that are, uh, remember this, things will come back to normal, or at least somewhat normal. There will be some changes in the earth energies that will be permanent. So they will have to get used to these things, <laughs> but uh, they will learn to move forward and survive properly in these new conditions. Notice that the squirrels, um, some of their nuts still, and they're, this is at the end of the winter, and they should be actually uh, staying in indoors for this time. <laughs> All animals have been affected in some way, some less than others. Of course, it depends on what part of the earth you're on and what part of the earth uh, animals react in. So therefore, <laughs> you will see that there are many differences. There is a question here. Come closer. How um, will this energy affect the ability to do energy healing to help others? Um, how has this changed or how can we utilize this energy? Oh, excellent question. You see, it's only strengthened healing and energies because the energies that are here are not, and even though when they're all mix, mixed up the way they are, they do drain humanity from their and make them tired much quicker. But when they settle down, these energies will help healing in greater ways than ever before. They will encourage healing. They will encourage a newness in the atmosphere, <laughs> a newness in creativity, in uh, different species, animals, bugs. And it will create a new kind of atmosphere some of which will thrive in it and others which will not be able to uh, right away feel very comfortable in. But hopefully <laughs> in time you will all become part of the new energies, which is a little bit more magical. You see fourth dimensional energy, this is to work with fourth dimensional energy, which all of you have. So these changes are to be positive reactions to fourth dimensional energy. Do you understand that? <laughs> so therefore, very positive, very encouraging. Uh, and Will will know Aquarian fire we, was created for the new energies and will be able to help heal and adjust people to the new energies. It is a modality that is for balance, 
for all kinds of beautiful things. It is for whatever humans need at that time, not necessarily just healing, but for balance, shocker brightening, and for energy and all kinds of enlightenment. <laughs> Very well. More questions? I do have a question um, right off that topic, Gaia, in terms of um, Aquarian fire. I had also recently learned that there's a local radius healing version of Aquarian fire called vortex healing. And so I guess the Aquarian fire is the distance and the vortex healing is right near you within That's like... Just that's just a segment of the Aquarian fire. The Aquarian fire is inclusive in many other things as well. <laughs> oh, interesting. Like, um, can you elaborate on that a little bit more? The Aquarian fire is all inclusive for all these modalities because it is talking about the energies that everyone will be using. Vortexes, the... Uh, um, magnetic fields, the, the uh, healing energy in the body, and all the earth energies that are there and changing. So it will have several different portions that will, some will say, ah, oh, this is Aquarian fire helping this vortex, or this is Aquarian fire helping with this healing, or this is Aquarian fire that will help with uh, calming the sea or calming individuals that might be very hypertensive or whatever. It will also help those that are um, what some people call mentally ill <laughs> regain a balance in this third dimension. Oh, it's beautiful. I'm, um, there have been questions coming in about um, the radiation on the planet, particularly the areas like Fukushima, um, sending things like, I mean, of course, Reiki in general, but specifically Aquarian fire healing energy uh, will help. There are, there are many different uh, beings helping with the clearing of this energy. Mostly the Clares, which live under the Pacific Ocean, and that they are sending healing energy and collecting this radiation and sending it out because it affects them. It's actually sort of a selfish thing. <laughs> They don't want to be affected by the radiation, so they are helping to um, eradicate the this particular problem because it helps them as well. <laughs> it also helps the uh, ecology all around them. And they do need the fish. And they knew, do need the plant and algae life that exists where they are. And so th they are helping. But other species are also taking some of the radiation out as well. But um, they are even though this um, radiation is still pouring out from these areas in Japan, yes, I understand that. But we are all working together to bring things into a more normal uh, atmosphere. And they are helping me. And I love it. I don't have any radiation burns except on the planet, of, uh, the, uh, except on Japan at this point. The, it does not uh, affect the bottom of this sea at this time, but it will affect it eventually if it's not taken care of. Those um, green cultures on your planet that are also trying to find ways to help, but and your countries uh, such as the United States and Russia and those that are affected somewhat by these uh, radioactivities are also being a hand for this cleanup. That's so wonderful to hear and um, I think it's going to help ease a lot of people's minds because there was obviously huge concern about the radiation issues. Well, so. there's still huge concern daughters, there's still a huge concern because it has not been completely taken care of, but it is 
much better than it was. <laughs> yes, it is healable, and that's important. To yes, it is. Not 100%, but it is healable up into a 94 percentage point. Okay, beautiful, beautiful. Um, we had some questions coming in. Uh, there was a YouTube user, Tracy Hunter, is asking if you have any thoughts on the massive whale beaching in New Zealand this past week. Yes, that is not a good thing. That was also from um, radiation poisoning. So they did pass too closely by that area. It took a while for them to uh, die. So they were headed south, of course. So it is a sad thing, yes. Oh, saddens Mother Earth to see these kinds of things. But however, that will alert mankind that more work is needed in that area. Yes, yes, certainly. Okay, thank you for um, touching on that briefly. Um, we had a question uh, from our member here. Uh, Krellick has a question for you. Go ahead. Krellick! <laughs> Hello. How are you doing? I am well. Despite all things, I am doing well. <laughs> yes, I send you energies every day. Thank you. Uh, I, I so wanna... look forward to feeling the energies that are sent because I need all the help I can get at this particular time when there are so many upheavals and so many things that have been noted that need work. I wanted to ask about the asteroid belt that is in our solar system. Uh, who was the planet that was there between Mars and Jupiter? That was there. There was a planet there. I do not know the name of it. Maybe someone out there does. But it was uninhabited as far as I know. <laughs> of course, that was before my time. I was still very young when that was happening. Okay, uh, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> I really don't question the other planets or the asteroids or anything. I have enough to be concerned about with my own here on Earth. Yeah, you've got a lot on your hands, Gaia. Yes, there's <laughs> a plenty to think about here. Yeah, and definitely. Also, the ones that I communicate are the sun and the moon. Those ones I do need to have some communication with occasionally. <laughs> <laughs> well, we we appreciate the support even from the other planets. Um, so uh, we had some more questions coming in here. Uh, let's see. It looks like Michelle has a question. <laughs> yes. Good morning, Gaia. Good morning. To you. So uh, a few things are on my mind. Um, pretty consistently other than like sending healing and stuff like that. And I think all of us do that as often as possible, but um, in a more practical way, our food system or food supply has basically become not food. It's become pretend food or chemical food. Um, and um, in some places, this is true. Yes. Uh, Yes, I think in the United States it's pretty prevalent. Um, a lot of the groceries we can buy are a lot of chemicals that aren't actually food. And and then, so what, what I was wondering is, number one, our food supply is poisoned with chemicals. Yes, um, there is some of that, yes. And, and our water supply is poisoned also with chemicals <laughs> um, still surviving yes we are surviving I was just wondering as people like how is there a way that we um, you know other than sending energy to for clearing and things like that um, what how can we do you have any advice for us to kind of 
Yes. Collectively we reverse this process. This has, going, this has been going on much longer than you've actually realized. It's been going on for 40 and 50 years now that the food supply has not been what it used to be. Yeah. Not as clear. And the, there is some evolution that's happening within the human body. But notice that the lifespan continues to get longer. Did you notice that? I did. Well, yes. then, that is because of other things rather than the food being contaminated and poisoned and the water and things of that nature. You are being cleared. Your fourth dimensional energy is a clearing. Your pineal gland and thiamus help you to get rid of these things that come into the body. Now, if you believe <laughs> that they are, they that they will harm you, the belief system is very strong and sometimes <laughs> you will believe that you will be harmed and it will harm you. But if you can believe that you, your body can clear itself from some of these aber aberrations, let's put it that way, then uh -huh. you can be cleansed. Right. You have different portions well, of the, the body and thought process that help you to cleanse. Also, medication these days has helped some people live longer because they believe that that particular medication will help them live longer. And so there it is. They do believe it. But many things are uh, at work in your benefit at this time, not just in your uh, demise. You must survive as a species. And so therefore, we will make it so. Okay. So... I understand. I mean, I personally believe I reiki my food before I eat it, et cetera. Oh, very good. Well, that gets so, most of the pollutants there. Right. It's not really just about me. It's about population as a whole because it looks like everything is corporate connected. So our food is run by while. corporations. Corporations are allowed to pollute our water which makes us sick, which makes us need medication, et cetera. And it's always about money and not about well -being. Do not dwell on these things because positivity will overcome them. Okay. We, will, we have to learn that if you look at the negative, that is what you will be living in. Okay. If you live in the negativity, then it will be part of your life and your fears. If you okay. learn to make your food positive by raking it if you, you learn to make your life positive by bringing the uh positivity to it i know that there are some people out there that see life as a very dark thing and a very dense thing <laughs> yes and and that it has played many a significant negativity on them but Look at those people that they've come through this negativity and have learned to use their gifts of positivity. You see, are to shine the light on these things because as you shine a light on them, and that's what you're doing now, I would pray that you're just shining a light on these negativities so that they will go away. And that's what I'm telling you about now is that there are ways to get rid of these particular things. There are ways to fight back within your own realm. You do not have to be a corporate person to be able to cleanse your water with energy, to be able to cleanse your food with Reiki, to be able right. to live in a world where you will live longer. That proof that life is lasting longer on this planet. And it is because fourth dimensional energy is more in control than it used to be. Okay. <laughs> I mean, that's good for me. That doesn't maybe extend out to the general population, but I guess no, I can also intend that also. But it can extend to the general public as they learn more about who you are and what light you shine and what truth you have that is greater than the truth that is in a negative world. Okay. Thank you. Be well. There's I love you so there. much.
There is someone out there that is concerned that I have no hands. <laughs> <laughs> I must tell you, the energy is that I have just is making the hands move. It's not that I have hands. <laughs> Oh, silly people. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When I said you have a lot on your hands, that was a figure of speech, but somebody uh, said, God has no yes, hands. Yes, yes, I understand. <laughs> Do not worry. Everything can be explained. <laughs> of course. <laughs> okay, awesome. Um, all right. We have, uh, we have another question from, um, Stephanie Baker. She was asking, um, if you would like to elaborate on how the chemtrails have been affecting you and those sort of government programs. Yes. Chemtrails are out there and they will, they will absolutely poison the atmosphere eventually. But the thing is about chemtrails, there are some species taking them out of they are diffusing them and making them neutral but there are also many industries now <laughs> trying to come up with a much safer way for fueling the airplanes and this is underway at this time and they have found <laughs> that backwards engineering some of these spacecrafts have given them a cleaner energy but it's very expensive on this planet however <laughs> they will find a way to make it cheaper but i am so happy that they are using the knowledge that they have found to make a world that is better for you <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, me too. Um, uh, people are asking for more clarification. If you have any recommendations for the best way for us to be able to help neutralize the chemtrails. Actually, the aliens are doing more than humans. Humans are doing very little <laughs> to neutralize chemtrails except for trying to find better ways to fuel the planes. But every third or fourth chemtrail is being removed from the planet's atmosphere. This is a great help, and that is a high percentage. However, there is still more pollution than there is clearing. Yes, it does seem as though um, a lot of the chemtrail programs have been disseminated or are in the process of being shut down. Would you agree with that? Not necessarily. The, the projects that have been shut down have been failures. So therefore, that's why they were shut down. They actually became more caustic than less. And so the secret societies that have done <laughs> the most to help in this way, you don't hear much about. <laughs> there are those that have great deals of money and they, they are using it to bring this kind of um, fuel to the world. And the, it is secret because they don't want anyone else to know what they're doing because they want to make all the profit when it's released. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. Okay. <laughs> you know how they are. <laughs> oh, yeah. Sure do. <laughs> your, your laugh puts a nice light touch on all of this. So thank you for your cheeriness. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Um, okay, we have a question from Chris. Hi. Hello. <laughs> Hi, I was wondering if I could ask the aliens, angels, or beings to give me an attunement to the Aquarian fire healing so that I can become a, use it right now and be attuned to it right now and use it on myself and others immediately. Talk to Will. He, he will give it to you as soon as possible. <laughs> okay. 
won't you will <laughs> he is one that knows all about it he was one of the early founders of it i spoke to him and jim directly about it and told them many things that needed to do, happen and how it can be affected so yes let him know who you are what you are feeling and he will help you with an attunement Thank you so much. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, um, it's it's fascinating how powerful that is. I can speak on that firsthand. It's incredible. So, all right, wonderful. Uh, we have a question from a YouTube user, Komi Unen, asks Gaia, how does your ascension and transformation to the 4D Earth go at the moment? How, how has it been going? It is going fine, but what you under, must understand is that there's not going to be a lot of people just poofing out of the third dimension. That's not going to happen. You're just not ready for that yet. It's, that's a ways away because you must become less dense before you move into your fourth dimensional body. You understand? <laughs> Even though Teraha is here with you, and with and you cannot see it, but it is with you in the sense that it is the new, the next dimension that is on top of this one. Uh, it is that not many people are prepared. You must take time and calm yourself, and make yourself relaxed and one with the universe for a while before the the density starts to change within your body. It comes from the inside out. And you must understand that God and the sun have something to do with this transformation. You cannot do it without help from those that know how to actually system to be lighter in dimension and be stretch out and become greater and more are beautiful. So therefore, you are coming along wonderfully. <laughs> but don't expect to disappear anytime soon, because that's not going to happen. Not quite yet. There will be some in uh, that disappear in great monasteries or great Tibetan temples, because they have been working on it for m years and years to uh, bring themselves into this proportion with the next uh, dimension. But usually when there is no distractions, it is much easier. But with you here, <laughs> third dimension is one great big distraction for you. <laughs> <clears throat> Yes, it is. It's a fun distraction, indeed. <laughs> um, amazing. And it is the way it should be. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, Christine, let's see. Christine was asking if you know if the U.S. is going to follow the Trump administration and continue nuclear power. Let me tell you this. He is coming up against a lot of people. Every day he makes more enemies, unfortunately. <laughs> but they, and he also, but on top of that, his closest followers become more devout. And he, the, those that dislike him, dislike him more. And so there will be a time when things will have to break loose. I cannot tell you any more than that. <laughs> okay, all right, well, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> but they cannot stay the way they are. He said one solidarity, and he's actually causing the divide to become greater and greater between the so-called Republicans and Democrats and those that believe in certain things that he does not. And those that are on his side are 
solid. But those that are not on his side, angry. Mm. Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, <laughs> did you want to speak to someone else? <laughs> <laughs> well, we did have, um, looks like one more question, uh, two more questions oh, for yeah, you. I'll take another question. Okay. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, Amran was asking if there are um, any messages to, to him and also he was with the creators who created oh he's asking if he was with the creators who created the moon and the earth yes and um you were with them yes i have to say that but it would take a long time to explain exactly in what way you were with them so i will just say yes <laughs> Because there is, it's a multifaceted story, and it, it is beautiful, but it is not for this day. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay. Is that it? Uh, okay, thank you. Uh, last question we have from Sheena. Um, yes. Sheena, are you able to unmute? Yes, can you hear me? Yes. yes, I hear you. Hello. Hi, Diana. Hello. How are you? I am wonderful. That's great. I was just uh, wondering if you know how, um, if I'm not, I mean, not how, if I have uh, ascended, um, shifted a little from 3D to 4 yeah. or Let me explain. There is so much confusion going on with ascension. But ascension moves forward eternally, and you will always be part of an ascension of some sort. This particular portion of ascension is for telepathy. That is the next step in your evolution. And yes, you are doing wonderfully, moving into a, a greater ascension. If that is what you are talking about, absolutely. If you are talking about a fourth dimensional shift, that will take you to a different dimension. Yes, you are also on that path, but that path is much longer in many ways because you must be fully dedicated to that for it to happen in this lifetime. Okay, yes, I understand. Okay. And um, is there any message you would uh, tell me <laughs> from you? Is there a message for you? Yes. I enjoy that you are so positive. Your energy is moving up very quickly, but there is a reason for this. You have other gifts that need to open up. There are other uses for you in the world, and there are other uses for the things of your nature. You are a wonderful individual. Find that these gifts will bring your mind to an even higher element of understanding of all the things that you seek to know. Okay, thank you so much. You're welcome, you so beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> You're beautiful too. <laughs> blessings. Very much blessings to you as well. <laughs> oh, thank you so much, Mother Gaia, for coming through today. It was such a pleasure to speak with you. We love oh, your laugh you. and your energy. <laughs> I hope everyone is doing well and understood what I had to say. Do you, do you have a, a message for me? A message for you? But there was someone here in the room that wants to know if I have a message for them. And my message for you is that God is bringing you up and teaching you what the things you should know at this time. Be aware around you because your awareness is important to your growth your awareness is important to your growth be aware of how people are acting what they are doing how they are speaking and this will help you to get to where you need to go because you may not see it 
at this time. But the spirit works through individuals as well. And they can shine a light to you that you may see that may be more brilliant you could possibly imagine. You see, many of you have qualities and gifts that you give to others or show to others that they want to be part of. And therefore, be part of that good gift that they give and let go of any negativity you see in them, but accept the positivity in those that you find positive and make sure you become part of it that that is part of who you are as well if it's something good you want to be part of it don't you absolutely find a way to be part of that sometimes there are people around you that you want to spend a lot of time with why is that they have good qualities. They have qualities you want for yourself. Things that you want to gain access to in some way. That is not to say that you are using them. Don't do that. But to bring in that fullness that is their light and to make it a light for yourself, that is something else. That is something beautiful. That is something that the world gives to each other. Do not be the one that gives negativity to the world and causes the rooms to change temperatures and thought processes in bad ways. But be that person <laughs> that makes light, makes guidance part of their life without speaking guidance they are a natural beautiful guide to others because of their enriched oh, that is what you want to be Thank you. beautiful much love and i will talk to you at some other time <laughs> be well and remember be kind to me <laughs> and nature and be kind to each other yes <laughs> thank you mother Gaia we love you I am set. Energies from the ancient times. I have maintained my watch on it for millennia. Uh, my energy is given to those that need energy for understanding and leadership. I am not for those who do not have a purpose. Those 
whose purpose is great. What is it that you wish from me? Thank you so much for joining us, Set. It is a honor. Um, I believe we had uh, somebody here, I believe it was Krellick, who had um, requested you. Um, before we get moving forward with other questions, Krellick, did you have any particular question? Yes, I had two, actually. Uh, my first one being was that uh, in this in this time period that we live in, according to our ancient texts, uh, you said actually uh, you're most known you're mostly known for um, um, having disagreements with either it was either Osiris or Horus. I'm not sure if any of these are accurate. I had disagreements with many because they had ideas of what power was and how to use it. And they were wrong about their reactions to power. It made them cruel and it made them angry and it made them want all things to be exactly in their thought process and in no other. You must understand Leadership is a positive thing, not one of great negativity. But some of these, such as Osiris, used it in great negative ways to bring about sorrow and defeat in his own soul. I would not want this to happen. I know many believe Osiris to be fully alive, and he is but he must go through many clarifications and purifications to become the great person that he is now. So, so what was your responsibility or what is your, well, relative to where you are now, what is your responsibility? Your respons I am a leader of leaders, those who have great purpose will be on my sight, and I will speak to them as I see fit. But I will also correct them as they move through their purpose to make sure that they keep things in proper perspective. Many sounds Many people think that I sound negative, but I am not. Okay, and one more question. Now, what species are you? Species matters not. Blue avian was part of my ancestry, but okay. not completely. I was on Earth. I was born of on this planet of two species and that what is what gives me an interesting outlook about this planet yes because like the way people have you drawn it's like you have a real it looks like you have a muzzle that's curved downwards blue avian muzzle yes Okay, uh, thank you for your time. Is there anything else? Could you thank tell you. us what the second species is, please? There was a human. At this time, humans and blue avians actually could mate. They cannot do so any longer. But the blue avian that was mated to form me had a human body, which was created for his existence on this planet. Okay, thank you, thank you. Um, we have a few questions for you. Uh, it looks like Amran 
had a question? Continue. I hear nothing. Um, Amran, uh, I'll call on you again in a minute here. Um, maybe you stepped away. Uh, Will Mitchell has a question. Yes. I still hear nothing. Will, are you around? Okay. Uh, how about Maria? Okay. Can you hear me? The Can you questions hear me? must not have been. All right. The other question must not have yes, been. Yes, I do have one, but I want to ask Amran's question because he can't speak. Amran, Amran's question was he wanted to know about his, I guess, um, uh, Amran. If Seth remember him from Egypt and what is his connection or what is their connections? Omron has many connections in many different time periods. He was not in my time period, but he was in Egypt. He was in Egypt at the time that he was, but I did not know him personally. He was a great man there, but I was not in existence at the same time. Or I should not say existence. I was not on the planet at that time. Okay, may I ask my own question now? Yes. Uh, I would like to know actually my uh, my connection to Egypt because uh, now it keeps you know I'm, I I I'm, I'm having some kind of memories. I like to know about my past lives a little bit, just a little bit, just if there was any. I just need confirmation. Yes. You were in the lower portion of Egypt where the great temples were along the Nile. You were a servant to one of the great queens there who fought many battles to claim the land. I will not speak of the names at this time because they will be talking about this on their own. But I will tell you that you were in a great area and were a, a slave to the great queen. You were her favorite and you had many great treasures. Okay, and one of the past life is coming up to, you know, to, you know, into this lifetime, I guess, from Egypt, I guess, a karmic or whatever, or whatever it is. From that part of that region of the, you know, earth. Yeah. Okay. You feel drawn to it? Yeah, recently. Is that what Yes, yes. You are drawn to the Egyptian areas? Yes. That is fine. You are part of the history there. You were well known. And you were well loved. They knew all of her servants, but you were the greatest. I cannot you. tell you anything more than when you return there, you will feel a great familiarity. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. Um, we have a question from Sheer. Yes. Greetings. Greetings. I was wondering, I know that uh, Bast once told me that I had a reincarnation in ancient Egypt. She just told me that I was 
enlightenment and she can't tell me any more about it can you yeah. explain what did you want to know why she couldn't expand on that she could not expand on it because you are not to know all of your past lives you are only to know the things that they want you to know in this presence because you must react in a certain way you must be the person that you are on this planet and with certain knowledges you you may step into a different role than what is needed for you at this time. Perhaps sometime in the future, they will allow you to know some of the things that was going on and who you represented at that time. I see. Also, I was wondering about my connection to the Egyptians' God. I was once channeled uh, thought, thought and Ra, which was very surprising because I felt that I have some sort of a connection to Anubis and maybe to you. You have connections to all these, yes. There is a connection to all of them in some way. And I can't know at this time. Not at this time. And do I have a connection to you? Not to me but to the ones that you mentioned. Okay. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, Will, do you think your microphone is working now? Mm -hmm. There does not seem to be any sound. Yeah, not hearing anything, Will. Maybe you have to jump out and jump back how, in. How about now? Oh, oh there you are. Excellent. <laughs> Much gratitude, my Can friend. It's been such a long time. Tahashi no utuku anatia. Yes, I agree. <laughs> what is your question? Can you give light workers advice on on how to see the light on the inside and bring it forth? First of all, they must be aware of there is a light. If you are not aware that there, that you are light and made of light, and that light is all things, then that is your first thought. Light is manipulated to become matter, and matter is what you are. And within each of you, this molecules of matter there is great energy and light it can be broken back down to light if you so desire so look at yourself as a light being as reality not as a figure of speech but your density is actually light in a solid form you must understand that in order to bring greater light to yourself and others, you must know exactly who you are. And you are a being made of light. Step two, remember that light is a positive thing. It can be made into negative matter, it can turn dark, such as the densities of light that cannot be seen by the eye. But remember to bring this out and feel, feel it within you. So many of you have not been able to feel your light. You have been able to only feel the density. Remember that that is where you are and not what you are. You are in the third density. You are of the third density, but you are not made of the third density from origin, the or, or, origin. You are 
from God and God created who you are and made you into third dimension but remember your connection to God is not third dimensional that is the second thing you must know the third thing you must know is that this light can be fed it can burn brighter put in you how when you feed it with the right elements fourth dimensional positivity love unconditional goodness and love and things of this nature will make it brighter will make it feel better will make it grow you will then experience a greater depth of understanding of what light is and what it can do because it is an eternal essence many things other than that there are many other steps but those few must be taken first remember that it will not come easy to everyone Much love, sir. Infinite gratitude. Chishu no tutua ya chia. Chishu wa ti jua da vien de chot. Thank you so much. There is a statement to be made. No one can hear you. You must speak to the machine. That's right. I'm wondering if at any time that you and I may speak again. If, if it is necessary, we will speak. That's all. Okay. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, we do have some more questions. Um, Johannes was asking, on behalf of his brother, Pascal, he said, um, his brother is new to the concept of channeling, and his question is, how is he able to how would he be able to best deal with his ego at this time? The ego is a personal thing. The system must be engaged. There must be something that is believable about the channel session for him to start to believe. There must be information that he believes cannot be given in any other way, or it must be that his beliefs are starting to come into an understanding of what this is about. If he does not understand fourth dimensional energy and thoughts outside of reality in the third dimension, he will not be able to grasp what is happening here. Okay. Yes, thank you. Okay, um, we have a question from Carolina. Uh, Carolina, are you able to unmute? Aha. Mm. Uh -huh. Hello. Oh, hey, Joe. Is there a question or not? Yes. Joe, I was able to hear you. You can go ahead. I've had dreams of, of Set, and I wanted to know my connection to him and why you keep coming into my mind. Set deals with great leaders. Do you consider yourself a great leader? I don't consider myself a great leader, no. Perhaps maybe I do. Therefore, I will come to those that I believe are great leaders to move them forward, forward in their missions to help them understand that humility is part of great leadership we have. Well, thank you. Are, are you connected to Baal or Moloch at all? Because those names came with yours. Yes, those names come 
but they are not in direct connection to me, but they are similar energies. Okay, very well. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Awesome. Um, okay, we have a question from a YouTube live user. Armenian Virgo is the username they go by. Um, they said, I noticed a universal teaching regarding the history of the universe and Earth from many channels recently. Is this part of a progression and getting us ready for what's to come? This is a good question. The, the reason for the, these different uh, teachings is to give you an idea of how great the universe is. To give you an idea of how much history there really is. These are very small teachings in the sense that they do not uh, cover all the information that is available. However, they give you an idea of the immensity of all things. You people here are, are part of a great immensi uh, immensity that is happening, a great thing that has been watched for many, many thousands of years. So therefore, you are to understand that you are part of something that is absolutely galaxy and universe changing. Does that make sense? Yes, I think we're starting to see that more and more. <laughs> One moment, there is a disruption in the energy field. Correct. Very good. Continue. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, we have a question from uh, Sheena. Uh, Sheena, go right ahead, please. Yes, hello, can you hear me? Yes. 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 Um, greetings, Seth. How are greetings. you? I am well. Okay. Um, I wonder if you could feel who I am on my energy? I feel all energies. Okay. Uh, once uh, we were brothers and sisters, I was married to yes. <laughs> my brother, um, which was said that you, yeah, you know, um, ended his life, so I had to make his life, uh, he come to life uh, with um, Osiris? Yes. Yeah, so that is me. <laughs> I mean, not Osiris. I understand. Yes. yes. I so know I what it is that you have done. Yes. It. Okay. Do you want me to give me a message from that? There is no message at this time. Because I must speak to you alone to give any messages. Okay, I understand that. Okay, but that, then I will let others through, and it was nice to say hello to you. And I send you blessings and love. Thank you, and I send you the same. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, we have a question from YouTube user, goes by the name Eclectist. 888 what says um would seth be able to speak about the origin of rh negative blood type thank you i do not involve myself with those kinds of things i do know about rh negative blood types but the beginnings of them were from the another world it was not exactly from one specific area, but more than one species has brought that to this planet. Okay, interesting. All right, um, thank you. 
we have a question from uh, Krelik. Uh, yes, it's me again. Um, Seth, uh, I was wondering if you could maybe tell us um, how society in ancient Egypt, or at least your modern Egypt, was what, uh, what was it like? How was it structured? It was structured as most societies. The um, ruling elite and then their servants and the governments of councils. Also, there are at the bottom portion was the peoples, the followers, the those that worked the gardenings and things of this nature. It was not all desert land in Egypt. There were many things that many people produced and there was much work that went on in that lifetime. Now, Time when technology was introduced because that there were many species visiting, mostly the blue avian, avian, yes, the blue avians. We visited. There was crystals uh, everywhere with technology attached to them, amplifying the the technology in different and more appropriate ways than what you can possibly imagine. There was transporters from one levels of the temples to the pyramids world or the underground. They call it the underworld in some places, but it was actually just under the earth. So also from the ships to the ground and from the ground to the ships, there was much travel and communications. There was many things that were helped by the technology, especially the, the food sources, what they called famine. We were able to bring different things to the people to keep them nourished. <coughs> Life went on like it does in any society. There are things to do. There are friendships. There are love. There are many things happening. Death and life go on. If you would like to know what the different kinds of places that we visited, there was theater, there was the, the, the wrestling and the fighting, there was the uh, animal um, competitions, races, and things of this nature. These things continue into modern age in different ways. There was worship and belief systems. We were sometimes worshipped, but I was not one that would bring a positive thought to that because we were not gods, but we were godlike in their comparison. There were some of our people that did take on god identities because they enjoyed the popularity and they enjoyed doing the magical or mechanical things for the people. But it is not what I would want for this generation. Uh, okay, uh, thank you for that uh, information. Um, I had two more questions and they would be done. Um, my second one would be if if I have any connections to the Egyptians, the ancient Egyptians. Yes, of course. There's many of you here that have connections to ancient Egypt. It is just as it is. You will remember in your dreams and your thought processes, something of ancient Egypt will pop up because it was a time of great memorabilia 
and great thing burned in the thoughts of many and in the subconscious and behind all the chakras of the, those who were there. It was a stark, it was important, it was powerful, it was energetic, and it was beautiful. There was many positivities. Yes, and my last question is, um, with the different uh, with the different aliens that were in Egypt at that time, uh, were there uh, different uh, different kingdoms that were that were ruled by different uh, extraterrestrial uh, people? The aliens that we dealt with in the Egyptian areas were those of trade. They would only spend short times in Egyptian or Africa, as you call it, and the rest is they will would go to their planet with the things that we've traded with them, gold or different things, some of the more radioactive minerals. We did know how to mine without digging holes. So there were things that we could uh, get from your planet and bring forth without digging, but transporting them uh, molecularly manipulation. Uh, thank you for that. Yes. Okay. Thank you so much. Absolutely incredible information. And on the note, you had mentioned pyramids. Um, Liliana was asking if you could elaborate on all the different purposes of the pyramids. If you look at the structure of the pyramid and the size, you will see that it has downward ramps that could not be used for walking. Did you notice, are, are you all aware of that? These were different places for different kinds of elements to be poured into the base of the pyramid for creating fuel for some of the ships. Used for creating different mixtures for energies that we traded to other species. Now there are areas that are small openings. You know that these could not be human size openings because they are too small. They, there was a species that did, did take care of the pyramids, cleaning them out and making sure that the next use would be being that they had to uh, get out all the different things that were there prior. There were times when the pyramids were also used for transporting, communication, and for meeting spaces. Of course, some of us were too large to go into the pyramid, but it was the smaller species to use in this way. I was I was over six foot tall. It's very difficult for us to go in through these sh small corridors. And so we had our own meeting places. Okay, thank you. Um, it also seems as though the pyramid energy um, was used for healing and purifying water. Um, yeah. There were many, many uses. Yeah. The thing is, being the shape that it was attracts energy, and so it was a good place for transport. Sending uh, materials to aliens and bringing uh, materials down, and then we would have them removed from the pyramid. Also, some of the human people were sent to the ships to do some work and then returned. It was used in many different ways. Also, the crystals on the pyramid were used for communication. Yes, and communica communication between the different planets as well, correct? Absolutely, yes. 
Yes, it's very interesting. Um, I, I had heard people use the term Stargate referring to some of the pyramids. Is that true for all pyramids? No. Not all pyramids were built the same. Right, um, depending on the information that the builders had at the time. Well, it depends on, they were built for specific reasons. They were given, um, there were humans and aliens buried under the pyramids as well because they wanted this energy to help them transport to their next lives. And they saw how much energy there was, and so they asked for this to be so. Grant them that particular wish. Okay, wow, thank you. Um, there were some questions coming in on this topic, just um, if, um, oh, where did that go, Michelle? Uh, can you ask about the use of sound and the pyramid buildings, like if they were built specifically with uh, frequencies? Is that the question? Yes, it said, yeah. can you ask about the use of sound there in were, the pyramid building? There were what you would call anti-gravity machines that helped us build these particular structures. Also, there was vibrational uses as well. Um, transport is vibrational, at least at that time. It took the molecules, it, it, it learned that the technology would know exactly the structure that it was looking at and be able to bring it into molecular form and reestablish it somewhere else. Also bringing that into understanding, it is broken into light. So you have several different, oh, several different uses for vibration and light in our culture back then. Okay, um, interesting. I have one last question before we move forward. There's some more questions. Um, I had heard that there was a fourth pyramid around the Giza Plateau, and um, it got destroyed. Do you? believe that in our future, whatever that means, um, that pyramid may be rebuilt someday? No. It was, it was actually disintegrated. It was not uh, blown up or anything of that nature. You will not find any portions of it anywhere. It was disintegrated for a particular reason. It had uh, was faulty in some of its purposes and needed to be uh, destroyed in the sense that it could not be fixed. Oh, interesting. So um, it's not necessarily that the energies there are off balance because that pyramid is gone then? No, no, not necessary, no. Okay, okay. Interesting. Okay. Um, all right. We have some more questions. Um, Pete has a question for you. Hello, Seth. Greetings. Greetings, Seth. I came to you before you now because I asked, wanted to ask a particular question that has been in my mind for some time, for quite a while. Um, yes. As a month or a few months or so of my time, there was this point where I was meditating to the point that I reached to a specific energy that recalls me a, in a place or in a chamber somewhere in Egypt. And yes. in this particular chamber, there was this sarcophagus that was pure gold in a sense, like pure, br brilliant gold. And it felt the need for me to open it. And when I opened it, there was nothing in it, just pure blackness inside of it. What was that transcribing to me in that time? So now. First of all, you must understand that when a pharaoh or a king died, 
they had all their possessions taken with them, including servants, pets, things must go with them to go to across the river Styx because they needed these servants to be with them as they entered the new life because they understood that they would still be king or they would still be a leader and that their servants would be with them and they wouldn't have to find new ones. So they took along all the things and all the people that they felt were necessary for a, a proper life in the next world. You were one of these people. Now, when you looked into this box, you did not see yourself because you had removed yourself from this box. It is where they had put you when you traveled with your king. That is your place, and that is your thought process about this. But remember, when you are that valuable to a king or a pharaoh, you had much power. Oh, okay, so thank you very much on clarifying it. It's enlightening. Your energy is strong. You have great energy from Egypt. You were there more than once. You were able to connect to this time for a reason. This explanation to you is only part of that. Oh, okay. Is there uh, one a tiny bit is, is that um, is there you a... are you are someone of uh, that is very ancient in your soul. Your soul has come from many millions of years of lives. And this life will be slightly different. You're going to be someone who is going to affect a change somewhere. But I am not sure what it is. Oh, okay. It's exciting. It's and my, my intention my, right now at this moment is to ask it, if... To ask if both has Both any messages for me at this time. Who? Both. Both. I do not believe that I am in touch with Thoth at this time. But I will bring it to you in your dream state. Very well. Thank you very much for clarifying. You are welcome. Who I am at this point. Excellent. Are there any more questions? I must go shortly. Thank you. Yes. Um, we can do maybe one more question. Um, Christy has a question. Christy. Greetings, Set. Greetings. Um, my question is about the pyramids and the Freemasons. Can you tell me what the connection is or the uh, ancient knowledge uh, that... They use the same kind of energy. They bring in ancient mystical energy into their ceremonies that is as old as the pyramids, as old as uh, the energies used at that time with the blue avians. It's actually blue avian energy that they're using. Well, what is my connection with the uh, with the uh, Freemason? I believe your connection is more Blue Avian than with the Freemason. Yes, that makes sense. I draw the pyramids a lot in my artwork and write the number thirty-three. Yes. Is there a, a very power a three? Both three and six are very are powerful numbers. When you put three and three together, they are six. Three and three are powerful numbers, and whenever you look at a pyramid, it has three sides. A three, it looks like a triangle. So that is three also. The pyramids are representative of power to you, of energy, and of your great um uh, condu conductive powers. You can conduct energy 
as a human being, not many humans are conductors, but you can conduct it and receive it. Very well. Thank you, Set. I am going now. You are welcome. Thank you so much, Set. Namaste. You're at your watch shop. Turiendo Shruti Viravan Mormesiev. And Sikwanti Atam Nokoti Shun Siku Diaton Vo Adro. Ah, Kyongtagjev Yehor. Noti Tat Tasha Viatia. No. Hello. Hi. Hi. Welcome back, Jim. How you doing? <laughs> Wonderful. Oh. Mm. I guess there's just time for some blessings, and then we will go. Yep, I think so. Uh, and Sabrina joined us. Um, Sabrina just said in the chat here that she has a message. Oh, very good. Go for it, Sabrina. Hello, everyone. Hello. How's everyone doing? Um, so I just want to um, just say a few things. Um, just something for, for us to think about. Um, not just as a group, but as human beings. Um, there's a lot going on right now, as we're all aware, um, in the world, in the planet, um, everybody's life, and everybody knows whatever it is that they're going through at the moment. Um, and I think everybody feels it. So keeping that in mind, I would like to say extend a hand. Extend a hand to a fellow human being. Extend a hand to somebody else's heart. Be there for other people. Because if we are doing this every week and we come here and then we keep doing what we've always done, then why are we doing this? And all of these beings come here to help us, for us to learn. But the important thing is for us to learn from within. That whatever happens within us, we take that lesson and believe me, I know it's hard, but we are the ones that are going to create the change, not them. We are the ones that have to decide for ourselves, this is for me, I want to change, I want to be more, and that regardless of what gets thrown your way, that you get up that you pick yourself up or drag yourself if you have to. But then we grow and then we move in the right direction. And even when you think you can't go on anymore, you get up and then you lend a hand to somebody else and not just think of yourself, but think of other people that are in need and that there are many at the moment that are in trouble. There are many at the moment that don't know what to do. And that that is where the work is. Because when we extend a hand, our heart grows. When we give to others, our heart grows. When we are gentle with other people's heart, our heart grows. 
When we care about what we say and what we do, our heart grows. And when we think and when we see disasters and when we see things that are being done and you act from your heart, regardless of what anybody else does, you have brought light into this world. If we all argue, if we all hate each other, we're not moving forward. We're moving sideways. And I don't think that's what we want. So I would like for everyone, this is a time for all of us to really go within and become more pensive and more caring and, and stop pettiness. We need to grow up as human beings. We've grown up in age, but mentally, spiritually, and heartfully, we haven't. We need to do that. We need to go in and say, what is the best thing at this moment that I can do for whatever it is that I'm witnessing? And from there, you act. And it's not always easy. It's not. But what is the choice we have? Join the crowds? Be like what we always done? Has that worked so far? It hasn't worked for anyone. So I just wanted to say those words. And um, I would like to please, please sit with your heart. Thank you. Thank you, Sabrina. I love you. I love you too, Jim. Thank you so much, Sabrina. There's a lot of um, power in those words, especially for right now, more than ever, I would say. Absolutely. So, so yes, it's about banding together. Um, we had a few people who were willing to give some blessings, and then we will wrap up for today. Um, I believe that Michelle would like to do a toning for us. Mm, I should okay, very good. <laughs> This message is brought to you to let you know that love can come in many forms. It can come in song. It can come in many vibrations. Some words, some feelings, some actions. Make sure that you, all things are moving toward an unconditional love that can be felt by the universe. Because when you are expressing a love that is unconditional, it has no end, it has no beginning, and it is for all. That was beautiful. Thank you so much, Michelle. Okay. Um, I believe that Pete said he is willing to do a blessing. Thank you for so much for allowing this session to begin and more positively. We are Hara Kayu to We are Hara Kayu.
Tawia hara mai ia ko te doe a ana kai a. Ia wia hoki a ra kai iti a mana kai o te doe a kai a. Ia wia kashi a tra kai a si tiri a mana kai a. Ia wia kara mai ia kai o te doe a si tiri ki a mana ne ki a te shupo a ia. Ia wia ko te doe a ki a mana kai o te doe a kai a te si tiri a mana ki a. Ia wia ko ho na i a te tiri ki a mana ki a te tira a ia 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 na i a te tiri ki a mana ki a. Yo e kaya el sita y el roco y a ti 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 ahora que me di a ti 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 a mi la kaya. Yo y a jara kayo toro y a ya y a yo do a ya kayo ti 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 a mi la kaya. Gracias. When we were a young civilization, we had dreams of being a great one. But somehow where along the line we lost track of our vision and were very selfish. But now we are seeing the great vision of our dreams come alive again. And that dream is the same dream we have for you. To become the great society that you wish to be. Take your eyes away from the future too long. Because right now is your moment to shine and to create. Thank you. Thank you so much, Pete. Okay, wonderful. Let's do one last blessing and then we will wrap up for today. Uh, Johannes said he is willing to provide one. Nasi shika tahai ya wasi shika naha. So you walk at tahai ya na kusushu wa karahi ya no sukutuha. Shaki ya na wasi shia karahi. No kasai ya ka. Naki ya warai ya saki tuhu wa shushu wa kari. No suku wa shaka taha. Naka tahai ya wasaka tahana. Naka tahai ya wasi ki ya na ya kasa shika tahana. No kotoho wa shishi arao iya, kotoha ni sanaha iya wa sikiya, no nana, namaste. We walk the pathways that our ancestors have walked, as you walk the pathways of your ancestors. Make sure that the light shines brightly on that pathway and that your footholds are strong. We would like to see you continue strongly into the future and not fall by the wayside. It is easy to be weak, but I see the strength in the numbers will be your help. Oh, that is beautiful. Yes, strength in numbers indeed. Thank you. Um, we actually had uh, two more people um, willing to give blessings today. And so please, uh, Carolina and then Maria, and then we can wrap up. Um, it's good to see you guys here. Go ahead. Hello. Hi. Hello. Can you hear me? Yeah. Hi. Hello. Um, I've got this energy, um, I think it's from dragons. I've never spoken dragon before, so I'm a bit scared. <laughs> I, I, I feel they want to say a blessing, but I'm not sure what it is. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to do it. Uh, Rook. Tu kunu ta uwa ka tia nu tuo kuwa a. Ia kunu tu kuwa ka a i n kuwa tuwa ka hiya tu. I n kuwa a tu o uwa a iya kuwa tuwa a. Uo kun tu kia tu kuwa ta iya kuwa tu uo a. O wo u. Oh, a tin ni kuo tuo a. Uun kun tia ka a u kuo tu. A uo kun kutil kun kuo ta a uon kuo kuo. 
ko ti ni ku tungku a a Namaste From the beginning of time all species have experienced periods of negativity but now is a time to express our light and embrace it as it is the future and not to fall backwards into a darker time here to give you all that you need within our own energies to be who you want to be to give you your speech to give you your words and your meanings to express yourself in the way that light is to be born again in another generation Oh, thank you so much, Carolina. That was very interesting. Okay, um, Maria, let's wrap this up with some high vibes. Um, one second, Maria. I'm not sure. Okay. I'm oh, sorry. Can you try now? You guys didn't hear me? Yeah, I'm so sorry. Um, I heard you. I got you set now. Suna hiari atakama ala sata kiana mahata kukuni kutikiana la sata hi iti kia kukuno koto kiyarana ili siti hiana sata kukuku chukun na hati kiana ola hiana. Namaste. From flight from star to star, seemingly was a miracle at one time, but now miracles are greater than even this. We can fly in our minds to the places of spirit that bring us the greatest of joy and love. And this is a greater miracle than anything that is in realities or in dimensional shifts. Wow. <clears throat> Thank you, Maria. That's awesome. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, everybody, for another amazing webinar. It was very interesting today. Um, I think we're about ready to wrap up. So I just wanted to um, send blessings and love to everybody who um, is co-creating this now or in the future. And um, again, please check out humancolony.org to stay up to date on our events. And let me announce this quickly here because Will said, uh, Will Mitchell, um, who does offer Aquarian Fire um, attunements and classes, uh, said that today he is actually going to be doing a donation based three hour level one mini class for Aquarian Fire that's starting at 2 p.m. Central. And to um, get into that, you can email him, will at reikiwithwill.com. You can also just Google Reiki with Will, and his website will come up, and you can get his email on the bottom of his website. So reach out to him um, to get Aquarian Fire attunements and to get this started because Aquarian Fire is extremely powerful and awesome. So um, we're very blessed to have that uh, at our fingertips, for lack of a better term. So um, wonderful. Let's wrap up for today. Love and blessings to everyone. Bye-bye, everybody. Thank you for coming. I hope that you got something out of it worthwhile and beautiful. So, Bye, cool. Jim. Bye-bye. Thank you, Jim. Much love. Bye, Jim. Bye, everybody. Thank you so Bye -bye. much, Jim. Bye-bye.